and Americ, aka Maximus in 3D, aka the star of the Die Hard MMA podcast, coming to us live from Phoenix, Arizona. And Americ, how are you doing on this Wednesday morning? Jimmy, buddy, happy to be on the show with you. And how about them Coyotes getting the ship right last night? Love seeing that. What's going on, low baggers? That was a giant win for the Coyotes, and they need a lot more. And their schedule is very difficult over the next 15 or 20 games. But a good sign. A good sign. All right, big UFC card this weekend. And America, set the scene for us. We're headed to Texas this week, Jimmy, where if you may not know, I've got some roots. My grandfather actually was a badass car salesman from Texas. He told me some stories growing up about a man pulling a knife on him, and he kicked his ass right there in the car sales office, threw him out on his butt. He told me that women are like Greyhound buses. If you miss one, another one's going to be along in about five minutes, so don't worry. Uh, you know, uh, I like hearing that right now. That's a uh, perfect timing for me there, uh, and Merrick. Uh, I like it, and I like your grandfather, the Texan. Let's get to work on this card. I have your action right here uh, locked in on my worksheet, and now I'm going to sports book review odds page, and I'm moving over to fighting. And I'm going to hit UFC. There's Bellator there. There's also boxing. I'm going to go to UFC. Money lines. And I'm just going to stick with money lines right now. We'll see if there's different moves. Let's start with your first look. Mario Batista, Miles Johns at Pinnacle. Mario Batista opened up plus 149. Now at plus 110. A big move towards Mario Batista in this Miles John fight. How are you handling it? Jimmy, this is one where I am not afraid to go against this public line movement. I like our guy, Miles Johns. I looked him up at about minus 125. He is 10 and 0 undefeated. He trains out of a gym, Fortis MMA, that is on this card a whole lot. Texas is their backyard. This is a showcase card for this gym. So there's a lot of fighters who are going to be peaking at the exact right time all together getting ready to rock on this fight card. He's your classic wrestle boxer. He's a tank. He's short. He's explosive. He's fast. He's got a huge double leg. And I think that he's just going to be able to wear on Mario Batista. I think this guy's going to be able to hit some takedowns in the early rounds, round one, round two, lock up one or two rounds and win a decision victory. He'll be able to hold his opponent down. Even though he's a little bit scrambly, he'll get scores for those takedowns. And if this is a close fight, we're in this kid's backyard. He's going to get the nod from the judges. There we go. Miles Johns picked up at minus 125 by our Anna Merrick. Minus 125. Open at minus 170. Anna Merrick not afraid of this big market move. Let's look at your next spot here. And it's the Bektich fight. Let's find it here on the board. Uh, Mursad Bektich opening up at minus 120. This time the market is on Bektich. There's been a 12 cent move towards him. Do you agree with that market move? How are you handling, how are you handling this fight? I absolutely agree with this move. You know me, Jimmy. Usually I like to play my dogs, but I'm taking a couple short favorites here this week. Mursad Bektich, I locked him up at minus 129, and I just think this is an excellent bounce back spot for him. He's facing Danny Ige, who's a guy I'm actually relatively high on, but he's primarily a grappler. And I think that this is a spot where Bektik's skill set is going to be put in perfect use. He's coming off a tough knockout loss to a guy in Josh Emmett, who's just got unreal knockout power for 145. He got clipped. What are you going to do? It's a guy who I believe is probably going to be sitting around the top five or top 10 very shortly. So in my opinion, there's really no shame in that loss. This is a wake-up call. He's training out of TriStar, which is one of the best gyms in the world. He's going to have a game plan for Dan Ige. And I've got a sneaking submission suspicion sorry, that it's going to include heavy grappling. I think he's going to come out, use his wrestling roots, and put Ige on his back. Ige's good off of his back, so he won't mind being there, which means he's going to be on bottom, and the judges always favor the man on top. And the other thing about Bektik is he has got crazy grappling ability. You cannot take this guy down. He was fighting uh, his his fight before Josh Emmett. He stuffed every single takedown from a very high-level opponent. He sees them coming a mile away. If this fight, if he wants the fight standing, it's going to be standing. Bektik's going to dictate where this fight takes place. He's also got the bigger power. He's got a lot of knockouts on his record. I think a short favorite line, minus 120, minus 130, that's perfect for locking this guy up. I expect him to bounce back here. Miles Johns and Mursad Bektik has started off and Americ's card. Next up, you've put a parlay together that you are putting two units on. Why don't you take it away and break down this parlay for us? 
Well, I've got to try the two-unit parlay again, Jimmy. Last week, we uh, not last week, the week before, unfortunately, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos shit the bet on us, and we weren't able to cash that one. It was one and one going into the third, and he made one bad decision that led to us losing that fight. So we're going right back to the well. I love this parlay. We have got Andrea KGB Lee, who is probably the cutest MMA fighter you've ever seen. She's a Texas girl. She wears the big cowboy hat. She is going to be spotlight front and center. And they have given her a absolute can to crush. She's facing lucky Lauren Murphy, who's basically a worse version of her in every single way. Lauren Murphy, she hits hard. She's strong. She is durable. But everything else goes for Andrea KGB Lee. She's younger. She's faster. She's more athletic. She's more skilled on the mat. She's got hellish ground and pound. I think if she wants to stick and move and keep this thing at range, she absolutely can. If she wants to take it down and end it by ground and pound, she absolutely can. If this goes to the judges' scorecards, Again, this is going to be a Texas girl in Texas, and Texas is very known for sketchy judging. She's going to get the nod. So she's a nice big fat favorite, but we are going to tie her to my boy, Alex the Great White Morono. He's another Fortis MMA fighter. He was supposed to fight Douglas Lima or Diego Lima, I apologize. And Diego Lima had to pull out due to an injury at the last second. So he's getting a short notice replacement fighter. And this kid, Khalid Williams, is stepping up to the biggest stage of his life on one week notice against a very, very tough competitor here. And he just doesn't have the skills. He's big for the division, but he's primarily a boxer. He has little to no ground game, and he leaves his chin wide open when he swings for his power punches. He absolutely swings for the fence. Morono is a technical brawler who's going to be able to piece him up on the feet, take advantage of those spaces, and if for whatever reason this thing does hit the mat, he's a slick wrestler, and he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. He's absolutely going to have this fight cornered any which way it goes. Tying those two together should get you about minus 125, and I love that. I think this is a solid, easy parlay. I put 2.5 units on it to win two. I like it. Andrea KGB Lee and Alex Morono as a parlay. And then we get to the main event. Dominic Reyes, John Jones. And you found yourself a big plus spot. Take it away, Anna Merrick. How are you handling it? Well... This is a spot for me that I've missed a couple of cards in a row. It could have cashed with regularity, and they always give you this big, fat, juicy line on it. But I was tempted by the dog in those other spots, as I tend to be sometimes just for shits and giggles. John Jones is the greatest fighter of all time. He's the best talent we've ever seen in the UFC. And he's fighting Dominic Ray as a kid with a whole lot of hype, but really doesn't have a claim to being the number one contender. He has not had that much experience, and the UFC is so thin at 205 because of John being so dominant they just got to throw whoever they've got up in that spot so he is not ready for this challenge he's also very one-dimensional he's got a good solid left hand and he does have some good leg kicks but if you're not a well-rounded fighter john jones is going to find the hole in your game and just piece you apart how i like to think of john jones is he is the bill belichick of mma he absolutely will locate your best weapons and he will take them from you in that fight and then he likes to play with his food john jones likes to humiliate his opponents let them know that they have have no way out of the cage and he's gonna just beat them up in front of the world for 25 straight minutes he's done it for the majority of his fights actually where he's got the ground game enough he could submit them he's got the wrestling ability to put them on their back and tko them he just doesn't want to he likes to embarrass them so i'm taking john jones by decision at plus 230 everyone's thinking that john jones is going to win this thing inside the distance and we haven't seen that from him except for in cases where he's had really heavy, heavy type of rivalries. Alexander Gustafson, who was broken, and Daniel Cormier, which is one of the biggest bad blood matchups the UFC's ever seen. This is a spot where he's got a young upstart kid, and he's just going to make him look bad. Rather than laying the crazy minus 500 wood on John Jones, I'm going to risk one unit to cash in a big score at plus 230. John Jones by decision, and that is Anna Merrick's card for UFC at the Toyota Center. Miles Johns at minus 125, Mersak Bektik at minus 129, then a two-unit parlay on Andrea KGB Lee and Alex Morono, and then in the main event, John Jones by decision at plus 230. Love having you on the show, Anna Merrick. Tell us a little bit about your diehard MMA podcast. 
Well, we're starting year two of the Die Hard MMA podcast, Jimmy, and the last couple of events have been a little bit rough for me, unfortunately. We are going to claw our way back into profit. Um, I break down every single fight in depth, give you all my picks and leans over there. So go ahead, give me a follow at Die Hard MMA Pod on Twitter if you want to get that breakdown. And I'm planning on bringing a whole lot more content in the future. Thank you, SBR. Thank you, Low Baggers. Good luck this weekend, everybody. Let's cash some tickets. There he is, an American. You can also follow his personal Twitter. That is at Maximus in 3D. Thank you so much for joining us.